Hi, welcome to another RCWorks video. Chris here. Today we're going to take a look at the MVP panel uh, logo controller. So let's fire this baby up. This is the uh, logic controller that's inside of the MVP control panels. So what we're going to show you today is just the basic navigation of the logo controller and uh, kind of just roll through all the different screens and kind of just give you a little bit of insight as to what they mean. So the first screen that we see here, this is the float status uh, indication screen. And we just touch the button to light it back up. Uh, and that's especially nice if you're working in the dark. You can see here on the left hand side, time dose mode equals off. So currently this panel, panel is configured for a demand dose situation and it's extremely nice to have these readouts on the side for your float switches. So for example, if you're doing some troubleshooting or wanting to see if the system is working properly, you can cycle your floats. So what I can do here is I'll cycle the pump float you can see that changed to up. And then if I wanted to cycle the alarm float, we can see that changed to up, down, cycle the pump float back down. Uh, so you can roll through all those different floats. We've got our, this, this panel is uh, with a redundant off, so we've got one float that's uh, just currently being held in the up position. That way we don't get any kind of an alarm going on. Anyhow, we'll, uh, so imagine this, this controller, the logo controller is very similar to like a pyramid in, in terms of navigation. So uh, the float status is the very top of that pyramid. And then uh, you can go all the way down to the bottom level. So pressing down one time takes us down through the information. And we can keep pressing down one push at a time. And that's going to take us all the way to the bottom floor, which is the date and time. But let's go all the way back up to the top really quickly and kind of just click through these and we'll talk about them. So we've got the pump cycle counter, the pump run time. That's going to keep track of the number of pump cycles in addition to the length of time that the pump is run. High level alarm counter, low level alarm counter. Uh, the number of power faults. So every time we cycle this breaker, it's going to keep track of that. Or if there's a power outage. Uh, the, the length of time in service, uh, the pump cycles, the pump run time high level alarm, low level alarm. Fortunately, these are all extremely well labeled and easy to read. So it's uh, pretty self-explanatory as you're navigating through these, looking for any key indicators to any problems that you might have. Now, as we get down to the date and time, you can press down all you want. Nothing's gonna happen because we are at the bottom floor. This is the basement. All we can do in the basement is go left and right. Uh, and the left or right will take you through the same sequence of screens. So we've got uh, I on the top left corner up here. This is going to indicate input. This is an input screen. So the inputs reflect all the inputs that we have down on the bottom here. Um, so if we were to test our push to silence button, or perhaps if we wanted to cycle some floats and test that our inputs are all being received correctly and that we don't have any problems with our wiring or our floats or what have you, there's obviously a, a, a million and one different scenarios that that you could encounter here, and we won't roll through all those right now. Uh, and then we've got the Q, which that's your output screen, and it's a similar situation to the input screen, other than the outputs are uh, on the relay itself or on this pro on the logo controller. Uh, AI, that's um, alternate input. So if you had a custom controller, had some sort of a uh, a time apparatus or something along those lines, you'd be able to use these alternate inputs, but uh, for those of you who need these, you know uh, what they are for, and for everyone else, don't worry about it. So you'll see up here AI for input, AQ for output, and then as we go through, uh, we get to the memory sequence, and those are just uh, a whole bunch of numbers and whatnot. And then this is the end of the road. Uh, so if we were to press right one more time, we'll be back to the date and time, and then if we go again, we're back to the input screen. So I'll cycle through these all the way, pressing right, and we get back to date and time. We can do the same thing going left, and we get back to date and time. And uh, then all we can do from there is go up, and we can go all the way back up to the top. The other side of the controller is going to be the parameters that you can adjust in terms of changing the, the way that the panel functions. So from the top, you get down to your date and time. You go all the way down to the bottom to that date and time, press escape, 
and you're going to get into the actual programming functionality. The very top option says stop. That does not silence the alarm. That actually just deletes the programming and renders this panel essentially useless. Uh, so don't push that one. But you've got program, setup, network, diagnostics. Uh, essentially almost everything you're going to need to do is going to be in the program. That's where you're going to set your uh, parameters for your time delays, your off time, on time, so on and so forth, depending on how you plan on operating this panel. In our next video, we're going to go through all those different parameters, what they mean to you. Uh, so we'll go back, and you go back by pressing the escape key here, and uh, we can go into setup. The only real thing that anybody's going to really mess with in setup is going to be the clock. Everything else is kind of uh, pretty unneeded. It's already preset to English and so on and so forth. So, uh, And then the rest of this isn't really going to come into play. But that programming there is definitely going to come into play. And we'll talk about that in the next video. So I'll back out, go back to the top of the pyramid here. And uh, that's everything you need to know about navigating the MVP logo controller. And this is the new 2017 version. So we'll see you in the next video when we get into the functionality.